Doctors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technician's Hour on this Friday, the 7th of June. We're looking at the Dow down. Uh, $6 at 38881 It was down quite a bit more. It could have been way worse because the uh, job, uh, jobless number was uh, 270,000. Uh, it was expected to be about 130 or something like that. That was a huge miss, and that really did tank the bonds. Let me just show you something else. Start off with that. The TLT is down $1.73 at 91.48. Now, <clears throat> I, dis I think I discussed this yesterday. I know it was something that I wanted to discuss. I wanted to talk about Chamberlain methodology, and I said I was. I, I think I said I'm going to wait until Friday because it'll be more uh, pertinent. What I was going to say is, there's a down arrow at a leg D going to a peak D in the TLT. That's the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF, and that was around about the 20th of um, May. It rallies to the 92 area. <clears throat> Red candle, gaps down. Well, the gaps are not so important here because anything that trades overseas prior to our open always has gaps. So in this particular instance, it did gap, gap down. Then it made a dreaded H and it pulled back very sharply. Then what happened, the nine period moving average went pink. That says that if you have a peak D or higher and it comes down, especially with the dreaded H pattern, and the nine period moving average goes from green to pink, not only have you upgraded from a sell signal to a sell mode, but the implication is that the technicals have deteriorated to the point where it's going to take a great deal to reverse that. Well, what happened was you had three or four really good candles, and it went to a higher high. It went just underneath the 200-period the, the exponential moving average. We're talking about the TLT, which basically are rates, right? Um, 93.03 is the 200 period moving average. It went to 92.70, was that? 92. Oh, 93.63 is the 200 period moving average. And this went to 93.43 yesterday. And today, with that bad news, the bad news meaning bad news in the sense that the jobless rate climbed a lot higher than was anticipated, which means there's an implication that goes with it that says, mm, now, the Fed should be saying, wait a minute, that's bad news. We wait, we're wanting bad news. We're wanting deflationary uh, and a deflationary aspect to it. So that's why a lot of people said this could be confusing because you could get what the Fed really wants, which is a weaker economy. But at the same time, when you get the weaker economy, you want to see what happens with the rates. And if the rates go back up, that kind of defeats the purpose, right? If the rates stayed lower, that actually would mean a lot more demand would be coming in. It's kind of a, it's a vicious circle. We used to call it uh, Hobson's choice. It means no choice. So in this particular instance, there was a very sharp decline. So I put a question mark above that E. Normally what happens, you've used up your down arrow. You can't go immediately to a down arrow until you get to another D. But sometimes there's one big spike that gives it up and comes back sharply. And if that becomes a more serious decline, then I put an inverted V. That's a little carrot that goes on top. I'm not going to, I'm just going to do it as a demonstration right now because this is still early in the process. But this is what it would look like. And it would always be either red or pink. And that signifies that that's taken the place of that down arrow because I can't have another down arrow until we get to another, at least a peak D. So I've used this. I'm not using it right now because this is a question mark in waiting. So we have to wait a little bit longer. Why? Because if this starts, if the yields go higher and with the TLT going down to the 90 level, it's at 91.57, then almost certainly I'm going to replace it. But at this point, it's within... <sighs> The nine period moving average is still very strong. The MACD is still very strong. Stochastic is very strong at 91. The on-balance volumes pull back with the price. 
But all the technicals are technically strong, so I don't want to use up anything that isn't pertinent. So I'm saying there's a question mark as far as I'm concerned about the yields just at this particular point. You Even here in the weekly chart, it spiked above the Chubb Wave Inside Track repellent zone. Now it's come back in, but it's still holding green. Uh, sorry, it's holding above, I would say above the green trend line. But it's still pink, the nine period moving average. So this, in the larger context, says yields should still be going higher. That's just the way it looks right now. And the monthly chart says the same thing. So I want you to get that out the way just to say there are conflicts going on. There's a conflict even in the market. Now let me run this and I'll explain what I'm looking at. Look, INDU, the Dow has gone from the low around number 38,000. It was actually 38,000 on the uh, 30th of May. It went to 38,000.96. But basically that's, I mean, we're talking about millennium, right? So um, this is 38,000. So missing it by a, a fraction is okay. So I'm saying that that round number gave me the sense. That's the reason why we took from our short position, we took it just a little bit off uh, for some profit taking. And it's, it's kind of been feeble when you think that the S&P has gone to an all-time high, the SMH is the semiconductors have gone to a new high, the QQQ has gone to an all-time all high, XLK, oh no, XLK has failed. XLK is the S&P Select Spider uh, Tax uh, Fund. 21672 was the high of the 23rd of May. And yesterday's high was just at about 217 or something like that, 216.09. All right, so that's fading a little bit. All right, let me go continue. So Dow, being the laggard, uh, we, we made a long, long term. We've been long, look, all the way from right there. That's uh, July, uh, that's October of 2022. We go back even further than that. We go to 18,213. That was the low March of 2020. We are still long from there. So in the short term, we've uh, switched. We've gone from a very the trading long to a short term short, and yeah, we are short. Now this is very interesting. Why? Because I'm always impressed when I see the histogram. The vertical is a technical Friday, so I'm going to be technical. When I see the histogram start to improve, that's the vertical line. That's the 0% line of the MACD. But it isn't great. It's just improving a little bit. And the nine, that nine period differential in the MACD is still way below the 26 period exponential moving average. The stochastic still only at 37%. On balance volume it actually ran up, has run up quite nicely. And it's even a little bit overbought. But the nine period moving average is still underneath the 14 period uh, 14 period moving average, so it's still pink. So this is a work in progress. So far, it's just a retracement rally. And you can see the U that went to a double U in the process here. We'll see if that can hold or whether it's going to fail in the next couple of days. Oh, okay, that's the, that's the doubt. Just give you parameters. A close next week, any day, closes below 38,500. That's a real problem because it's going to do, it'll probably do the arch formation. And if it rallies and goes above 39,300, um, that's 400 points from here. That's impressive. That's good action. All right. We'll get to the S&P in a moment. But I just wanted to mention before I forget, uh, thank you, Gary, for that. No one wants a new car now. Here's why. So they give you a whole list of why uh, people are forgoing new cars. Uh, new cars are just not a better bargain. Uh, Used cars are not just a better bargain. They retain design and features more coveted than the high-tech replacements. If okay. you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. 
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Right, let me just go to a question that I had. Um, cool Spirits in the Den wants you to know, hi hey, Bowser, is that a falling axe on the daily cues? Thank you. Wow, I, I'm so impressed that so many people starting to identify these different patterns. And the reason why I love it is because it, it, if you pick up something visually very quickly, uh, you know, when you're listening to, you know, when we listen to Tom O'Brien uh, in his, uh, when he does his uh, afternoon wrap up and he talks about the volume, just in a split second with all the experience he's got, he just, he picks up that volume in a split second. He says, yes, that volume is higher than it was on the left side, etc. cetera. Uh, when Larry does his one-to-ones, um, it just, he's just done it so many times. So these patterns are the same sort of thing. Low lows are much, lower highs are much lower lows, turns around, then makes a cup formation, breaks out and go one to one to the upside. So the QQQ did exactly that. So good eye and a yes. And so I want you to, I just want you to just uh, do that. Did I, I was it, um, no, no, I don't want to waste time now. So um, it is Technical Friday, so I'll just draw this in. It's the weekly chart as well. Remember, weekly takes a lot longer than the daily uh, you know, seven bars of weeks. It's seven weeks. Seven bars of days is just uh, seven sessions. So um, it looks like it's the same. But in fact, this one occurred way back in March. The one that we're talking about in the daily chart occurred in May. So there, but it's the same pattern. It's over and over and over again. So that was a break to the upside. So now the other question, I, I, there's something else I want to finish up on the, that a little later. I'll come back to it. But the question came in about Mosaic, the Mosaic company. This is potash. This is um, phosphates, crop nutrients. Makes an all-time high. Well, not an all-time high, but most recent high was back in 2022 at a, just under at about 78. And it comes tumbling down to the most recent low, that's in the 27s, has a really strong, now I'm calling this, this is Technical Friday, so I wanted to explain what I did here. <clears throat> because it's one penny difference, but it went on for three bars, <clears throat> almost four sessions, I wanted to call this 
a peak C because you had a little hiccup corresponding exactly to it in the on-balance volume. So I like to be ahead of it. Now, I, I never looked at it before. I had, in fact, notated to B. And then when I was asked about it, I went back and I, I saw there was notated to B. Then when I did it, I was going through each higher peak. And that's what you do in the Chapman Wave. You pick up the, the, the low bar and you just count every single peak above that low bar. Um, in this particular case, that becomes A, that becomes B. That's the high of the uh, uh, 10th of May at uh, 10 point, whoa, 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 30.15. Uh, and then there's a, a, a slightly lower high that becomes a peak. One penny above that peak B. Stars, legs, C, it's a floating ladder. Now, that C technically should go all the way to that high right there. That was the high of the 22nd. 22nd at 20, well, I keep saying 20, so 32.29. However, I like to be ahead of it. If I was doing this, I would have said, I'm going to call this a, peak, a phantom peak C. It's one penny difference, one penny higher, but it had all the characteristics of a peak. I want to be ahead of the game. I want to get to a D and be ready for a sharp decline just in case. Instead, it happens at a C, and then I'm just waiting and waiting. This way, I can prepare for it. I wasn't in it. I'm just saying these are the way, this is the way I look at it. And what I'm looking at is, yes, finally gets to the D. There wasn't a down arrow until pulls back, pulls back, and then it goes under the 9, 9 period, under the 14, and then it gives you the sell signal with another big close under it and gives you a sell mode. So if I was waiting for C, I'd still be waiting for it. Now, a C minus... Uh, you only get a C minus when you take out the low, and that's the low of 2783 made in the 2nd of May. So the question is, uh, the question is, hi, Basil, can you please check mosaic hanging around July 2021's level here? So look at this. It's actually going even, this is going all the way back to then. This is the Eiffel Tower, straight up, straight it's like a pyramid, actually. So... You would expect that phosphates, crop nutrients, etc., in this environment where there, there are subtle signs here and there of inflation and then, and then it disappears and then inflation and yields are high, you would expect, hey, potash, surely there's a demand for potash. I don't know, maybe there's just a super, super, a super surplus. Um, and in this particular instance, there's a peak D in the weekly chart. So I, I'm going to say to you, from my eye, and that's all it is right now because the MACD's week, the on balance volumes week, stochastics weeks, the nine period moving average is under the 14. I'm looking at this doji candle going under it, and now you just, this candle is a very ugly candle of the 2nd of May with a high of gaps down, and then it has a high of 29.74 and a low of 27.83. That's a big, I mean, that's uh, about uh, 10. Yeah, that, that's that, that's a uh, almost ten percent. So what I'm looking at here is that I think it's trying to find some kind of a bounce level, but the technicals are suggesting that we might have to get close to the 27, uh, 2783 low of the second. I my eye says we're going to have a much nicer bounce, um, not at the low but above the low, and it'll be an arch formation. It could even go from 28. 84 to the pink and black 14 period moving and 9 14 period moving average of 29.73 and 29.94. So it could even have a bounce into the 29s. But this weekly chart says, oh, don't get ahead of yourself. You'll have plenty. The best so far is an H goes to an M, a lowercase H goes to a lowercase M second arch formation. Um, well, the best case is it takes it out, and for two weeks out of three, it closes above the week of the 24th high of May, uh, and that's at 32.29. But at this particular point, all I can think of is a bounce or lower. So have pa have patience, but I tell you what I would do. I start preparing in my mind. I, don't, I, I think, Doug, Steve, um, you do, I think you do use options. If you do use options, I can't remember now uh, from what you've write, written in the den, but if you do, I'd start preparing for a September an August or a September call, I don't even know the, 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 the what strike price yet because we haven't got any confirmation. 
I'm guessing that it'll be 30. And I'm guessing that if you were able sometime to get it at about 72 cents, something like that, I think it'll be worthwhile. But I, this is just speculation. So you asked me about it, and you didn't tell me specifically what you were do, wanting to do. I don't see it as a short right now. I don't see it anything as a little bit of a bounce. The bigger move, I think, is going to come in a little while. Hope that helps you. So that's the Mosaic Company. Next question. Oh, this is what I want you to do. I want to do last week, and I forgot. I want you to do this week, and I forgot. But today, I didn't forget. What if there was a company... J-N-X is the symbol. J-A-N-X. And the name of the company is Janix Therapeutics. Trading at $42.99, up 39 cents. What if I said to you <clears throat> that the... the, 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 the sorry. Yeah, what if I said... Oh, no. I didn't want to do that. No, no, no. Oh, no. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Uh, what if I said to you that there were sales by the CEO and I was about to tell you all the different people? Oh, I'll have to try and find it again. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also getting his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Hi, folks. So let me just get this out the way here. So what would you say if this company, Genix, uh, what did I say it was? It was called Genix, Genux Therapeutics, Inc., um, saw the... Janix Therapeutics, Jay Lichter, director, sell 1.5 million shares. That's 1,500,000 shares at $54.75 for 82,125,000 on the 3rd of June. Um, 42.92, uh, is that what the price was? Yeah. Oh, wow. 10. Not bad. Um, and the price right now is at 43. What if um, Tig Reardon, the CFO, sold 822,721 shares at $54.75 for $45 million, and a couple of pennies in there. Um, <clears throat> And the price right now is 43. What if you saw that Ventures GLP, Avalon major shareholder, sold 677,279 shares at 54.75? They all sold at the exact moment for 37 million, well, 37 million, 81,025 dollars and 20, excuse me, 20, don't forget your 25 cents, Jim, Mister. Um, and it's trading right now at 42.98. Not bad, huh? huh? Well, now there are a lot of these in the insider selling and buying, but the other thing that was really impressive to me, uh, let's see, was this? I must double check that I'm looking at the section that said the sales. Uh, yes, US insider selling wins for Wednesday, June the 5th. Um, that included Agilent. We used to own Agilent, made real good money. We haven't been in for a long time. Amazon, but it's not a big deal. I mean, Amazon, so uh, for Greg McDonald, uh, is that a Patrick? For Greg uh, McDonald, CEO, sold 1,958 shares at 130. Oh, a quarter of a million. I mean, you know, this person probably must own. Uh, Hundreds of thousands, right? So this is just not a big deal. When I see Benioff selling um, his CL, uh, Salesforce shares, that's not a big deal. But look at this, D-Dog. This is Datadog. It's not that they're selling. There's Adam Blitzer, the CEO, COO, is selling almost 12 million shares at 109. So that's 1.3 million. Uh, Madre Amelie De. So it's uh, Madri Demeli, an insider, is selling 4,400 shares. And Kerry Coquella, the general counsel, is selling 2,900 million shares, uh, 29,000 shares. Did I say, what did I say? 2,931 for 320. So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a fairly significant sum, paying for your kid's college or so, whatever it is. But at the same time, that's not uh, I mean, in the in the portfolio that these people. Oh, and there's a third one, a fourth one. Amit Agarwal, president. Oh no, wait a minute. That's what I, what struck me. He's selling 11,387 11, shares. They're all sold uh, within 35 points of one another. But Olivier Pomel. So it's five people that were selling a data dog. You see, when I see that kind of number, I'm saying, "Oh, let's see what Data Dog's doing." I know one of our one of our listeners and subscriber had something to do with Data Dog at some point. So he's now at 109. Well, 109. Most of them were saying at 109. One person sold at 135. So isn't that interesting? And it's trading right now at 109. 
but it's got an arch formation. It looks to me that 98 is the 200 period exponential moving average in the weekly chart over a period of a few weeks. I think, or well, maybe two months, it could get there. All right, I just wanted to go through some of this, but that one that was really uh, amazing was JANX. Isn't that something? That's a lot of shares. All right, let's move on. Um, so I want you to just look at these things here. I'm going to just uh, deviate for a second because I spoke about this a few weeks ago. I said the IBB, this is the NASDAQ, bio, NASDAQ Biotech ETF, <clears throat> was showing good buying. And it said that it, it might, didn't necessarily have to scream much, much higher but it had good support at the 200 period moving average, which at the, at the time I think was at 131. Well, this thing went up to 139, pulled back to the 131, and right now it's at 137, and it's still showing internal strength. So the IBB is not great, but it's holding very well. I, the, you need to. So I had a question about the intermediate term. So this is the highest cash position we've been in, oh, for a long time. I didn't go to cash because I was so nervous and I was thinking there was a crash. I went to cash. For instance, we got out of our, we took our profits, small but profits nevertheless, in Russell, uh, the, the iShares Russell 2000, the, the um, IWM. We were in it at about 200 and we were taking little profits off on the way up and then as it was coming down and then I said, okay. Um, we're going to we're going to get out of it if it hits this number for maybe like just a one point profit. I like it. I don't really want to go back in. The nine period moving average has now gone negative. I don't want to fight that. And look how it's trying its best to come back, even after pulling back quite sharply today to a lower, low, lower, 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 lower highs and much lower lows. Um, but if you look at the nine period moving average, it's really holding well. And I thought about this so much. I thought. You know, I'm beginning to like the IWM. I'm beginning to, st this is the first time I'm starting to see on a relative strength basis. And I have to tell you, some of it is in the back of my mind. So I'm, there's no computer there. So I can't actually pinpoint specifically, but there's stuff going on that I just know is saying to me, this is the first time that you haven't just smashed to the downside. It's been a reluctant move to the downside, but it's been a reluctant move to the upside. So in, in, in essence, it's kind of a sideways trading range. And I said to myself, well, we got in at a nice level today, 200.61. So that would have been, um, let me go back to, what was it, yesterday? Let me just see. Oh, I don't have it. Oh, yeah, I do. Wait a minute, what's this? Yeah, we're in a 200.7. 0.70, so we'd have just been fractionally taken out if that was going to be the stop. And I thought to myself, I love the chart. I would like to give it about 10 points and just try to hold it and try to get through the next. I, I've been talking about May and June as being very volatile months and very select months with some stocks moving to highs, but other stocks not participating. I'll talk about it when I return. The Dow is up 118. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, 
You don't have to worry about that. As Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. So I want you to just uh, show you this, how the nine period works. Look at this nine period moving average in the one minute. This is a one minute chart. At 9.44, it flips from pink to green, and the price goes just breaks above uh, 5, 53.48, 53.50 area. And where are we now? We're at 53.75, and it's still green. And you know, this is only a leg B in the 10-minute chart. And that's the reason why I say to subscribers that it's through attrition that we've raised cash. And at the same time, we've, we've stepped aside from the, from the short position here because I said... No, I, I want to do, we, we went long a position yesterday. I was going to have, it's a split position. We're going to get, I, I wanted to get in the first one so that we were in it if it started to run and got away from us. And the second one, part of the split was going to be lowered down. Today I said, let's just skip the second part, just treat one and let's see how that handles. Why? Because if it runs well, and it's so far now it's running well, um, and it's in an area that be would be uh, in the brokerage area. And that means in the brokerage area, if the market is going to run up, the brokers are going to do okay. If the market's going to come down, the brokers should be weak. And that's how I want you to do it. And now it gives us time to start looking at, in this particular phase, what's working. So, and it even now, it gives me time to say, well, maybe the IWM is not so bad because I want something that is going to be great for this for the third quarter. That's really what I'm looking for. And that's the reason why I thought, well, maybe I should have a wide stop. And then I thought, it, it just, it gets too complicated because it drops maybe eight points, which is not a bad percentage at all. But now I'm kind of stuck and I don't know what, and just this way I'm fresh, I can look at it, I don't mind being fresh. All right, so with that said, um, I am not overly negative in the sense that, oh my God, I want to short everything. I'm saying, I've got, I'm looking at Amazon, and I think Amazon's acting very, very well. And it's up today, a little bit up 34 cents at 185.32. It isn't great on the daily chart. It's got the falling affirmation that it's breaking out of. But each level on the left side that it takes out says, now you know exactly where to go for. The next peak on the left, that's higher. And you go one step at a time. And you wait for the MACD to cross positive. It has finally crossed positive. The day's young. It's only an hour and a quarter into the day. But so far, the nine, nine period moving differential of the um, 914 has crossed positive. Maybe that's going to close positive as well. If it does, and the MACD closes pro positive, you can expect that the 59% on the stochastic will actually get 
towards the 70, maybe even 80% level. The on-balance volume is lagging. But that's how I like to look at it. The weekly chart is holding very well. Um, look at Apple. Apple um, holding nicely up $1.20, uh, just stuck in this higher range, but uh, getting closer and closer to um, the all-time high of 180. So what did I say it was? Um, it broke the 182.94 level. It was the, the high of, I think it was December. Yes, December. It went to one, 199.62. I'm not sure why I forgot to put that in 199.62. So it's not too far. It's one, 199.62. And wait a minute. It's trading right now uh, in the 195 area. So it's almost there. Right, there's the inside track repellent zone, which could also be a magnet zone. Now, talk about that. Microsoft um, is up just a little bit today, but I drew this pattern. This is the falling axe formation. So today's technical Friday, but I think I'm going to run out of time. Okay, let me just draw this. This is the pattern that we always look at. And I, I go back all the way to when I first started at TFNN. I remember we were at a conference down in Florida, and I'd have given a presentation. I thought, you know, I just, I always need to go for a walk on the beach. I love walking on beaches. I'm, I'm not great at cold water, but I love walking on the beaches. Um, and I, I, I said, oh, my goodness, it's Tuesday today. I got an interview with Tom. And I ran back to the hotel. And I said to Tom, well, Tom, let's see. Let's see how the Chamwave Stork Lake formation is going. And this is the stalk leg formation. You've got a long leg up, then you go, it has to be an oval. It can't be a rectangle formation. And then there's the neck. And the neck says it can go to a D or an E. And then it pulls back and it goes back. That Then the beak starts. And the beak, if it takes out the arch high of the oval, um, then you can see it go down. It could even go down further. If it goes down underneath, that's terrible. But if it just stops inside the body, especially the top part of the body, what happens is after the beak is formed, there's a very strong rally, a rally, and then you're on your own. So this is the pattern. Well, this is the stalk leg formation. Here we were long, we were long all the way from way back there. So look at this. So here's your leg. The whole thing takes it's it's a leg, thin leg like a stalk has, and then you've got the leg. In fact, I usually put it in capitals. Leg. Here's the body. And then we anticipate that there's going to be a neck and the, the, the neck. And I discovered this. I mean, I'm talking about 1980s or something. Um, I had a friend who I was doing business with uh, a French money management manager, but he was doing something completely different. And he invited me over. He said, oh, I'd like you to meet Jacques or whatever his name was. And uh, Jacques, we're talking. And I said, well, this is pattern. And I drew it, and I said, oh, my goodness, it looks like a stalk leg. You didn't know what I was talking about. There's the leg, and I usually make it pink. There's the body, and I usually make that pink. You know, I'm all about visuals. I came, uh, when I left high school, I went to art school, uh, graphic design. And then I went to music. And much later on, I had a dual career of stock market and uh, music. I was a professional clarinetist. Um, yeah. So then this is, the, above here should start the neck, the neck, and then comes the beak, and the beak goes all the way back. So this is the neck, and then the beak comes like this. There you are, so that's your stalk leg, right? And we just follow the pattern, that's all. Now I'm waiting for a breakout in Microsoft, and we'll see what happens. Now, I, I for subscribers, I, it went flip to green. I almost yesterday and even today thought, should I get Microsoft as a trade to go to the new high, all-time high of 43.61, one penny above the previous one? And then I thought, I just need to let today settle because there's a lot of conflicting uh, things going on here. So now it's getting much, much clearer. So there's upside, still upside action to come. And uh, Microsoft is our kind of benchmark. And we went long on October the 30th because... I said, Microsoft is in the Dow. I'm not, I'm not going to go add to the diamonds. I'm just going to go along um, Microsoft. It's in the S&P. It's in the XLK, the S&P Select Financial Spider Fund. And it's in the AIQ, even though we have the AIQ 
ETF, which has done very nicely, not done great, but it's done very nicely, that's Microsoft. So I think that's all Microsoft gives us the clue that is actually tired of going up and that it wants to have a decent breather. I'm just using it kind of as a benchmark. All right, so I did that, and it's technical finding, and I got through it. Very nice. I'm just looking at all these insider buys and sells. Um, I always think that insider buying is a lot more important than insider selling. But I also know that I've looked at these for long enough that you don't know. Sometimes they very early, very early. I'll be back. Dow's up 181. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. What I want you to do right now, so CRM, Salesforce, uh, Benioff, and a whole bunch of the others were selling, selling, selling uh, back in May uh, 28th or so. Um, and it came down from about uh, 269 to 211. Well, I see that um, G. Mason Morfitt, the director, bought 428,000 shares at $233.17, um, just for a mere 99,796,000, um, just on the 4th of J uh, June, and it's trading right now at 242. So isn't that interesting? Okay, and the other thing is the GDX. I was asked about the GDX. Remember, I said I'm a little worried because unlike gold, the GDX did flip to positive yesterday, but it was highly suspicious the way it did it because all the technicals, the other technicals were negative. Now it's gone back to pink. 
uh, down uh, dollar ninety six to thirty four point oh six. I just think it's consolidating big gains, just slightly lower highs, and lower lows. Now the other thing I wanted to say, gee, I did that, did that, did that. Um, yes, in my overview that I'll be doing after the close today for subscribers to my opening call, I'm going to be discussing a number of things. Now, what's really important is that to get real say selling, you've got to see the VIX index scream much higher. Um, it's trading right now in the uh, 12s. You want to see it holding in the 1480, 1530 level with a down, down, huge, big 500 down, 100 points down. And it has to do it for one or two consecutive days, two or three consecutive days where the S&P down. That's the sell mode. We haven't got anything like that. So if that's not there, then you keep getting these wafts of buying. So the bias right now has to be up until we get some signal. The SMHs. Uh, trading right now um, down just three cents at 252.28, still holding very well. Nvidia will be splitting. So, this is the last day you can see my notations there for the 1255.57 all time high yesterday. We'll see what happens. But so far, I think it's rotational. The stocks that have been weak remain weak. The stocks like at Costco still doing great. And uh, we'll see what happens over the weekend going into Monday. But so far, Good action so far to the, to the uh, job list. Stay tuned for Steve Rose and all the great programs.